right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first episode of our podcast, The Big Time Holy Hour. I am your host, Father Padge, and along with me is Big Time Reggie Lincoln. And uh, we're going to try this whole podcast thing that all yeah, the other yeah. wrestlers seem to be doing. Yeah, for some reason, like, um, everybody else is doing it. We said, what the heck? Yeah, let's give it a shot, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're not professionals. Well, we're professional wrestlers. Well, we're professional wrestlers, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, all right, so we're going to do, I guess, a get-to-know-us kind of segment on this one. Um, oh, yeah, of course. Talk, of talk course. about our inspirations who inspired us to get into the business and, uh, you know, talk about things that matter to us and why we're still doing this after as many years as we're doing it. The uphills and downhills, the pitfalls, you know, just all the good and the bad that come, that come with being part of pros it. Pros and cons, all of that, man. So let's just uh, start right off. Uh, I'll talk to you, Reg. Um, yeah, what's up? Let's talk about, uh, you know, tell me uh, what year, uh, well, not what year, uh, how long have you been in the business and uh, what year you started? Uh, I've, been in, I've been in it since 2012, man, and... It's, it's been a good journey so far. Nah, journey. A big time journey, right? A big time journey. Big time journey. Yeah. Like I started off with different gimmicks before yeah. big time Reggie Lincoln. Oh, you did? The yeah, one your first yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Right on. Trained by Killer Tim Brooks. Tim Brooks, WCC. I, W, w yeah. yeah WCCW legend territory days brother sportatorium in the Dallas oh area, yeah right most definitely Von Erichs era and all that. yeah the Von Erichs uh, right on you know so you got you got trained old school very old school you uh, know right on yeah. Killer Tim Brooks Action Jackson that ass, you know, yeah right well, on that's why I got this old school mentality sometimes hell yeah all right cool you know they taught me etiquette they taught me pretty much they taught me a lot of things actually. Right on, man. Man, it is really storming outside. Yeah. Here. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but it's it's coming down outside. It's raining pretty yeah, it's hard. Yeah, raining outside. Thunder, but, thunder well, I mean, we're inside, so. Oh, yeah, we're good. We're, we're in comfort of our lavish studio here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, so that's, that's a little bit about you. Um, well, what about you, man? Uh, well, I've been in it a little bit longer than you. I, I got in it in 2002. I, I started training in the summer of 2000. Ten years before me. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, but I'm also quite a bit older than you. Um, I'm 34. And you're 26, right? Well, I'm turning 26 later this month. Oh, okay. All right. Well, i got to get you something. I don't know. I'll figure that out later. But um, I got it in 2002. Uh, a match where I go over? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in control of that. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> But uh, let's see. I got it in 2002. Uh, let's see. It's that's 15 years. Well, it'll be 15 years in July. Uh, July 20th was my first match um, yeah, of 2002. Uh, I was trained by uh, Jim Jameson and uh, Jeremy Tolan were the two guys that trained me. There was a uh, there were several guys that trained me, but those were the two that like really got me. You know, got me as good as I am, and I've been. Uh, I've been up and down. I've held the uh, several championships. I think I have a total of twelve championships that I've held, and uh, it's it's you know I've I've traveled all over the United States and some other countries and stuff. And I've had a, oh I've, man. I've had a great time. Never doing been it. out of the country before, man. Well, I used to go out of the country before I was a wrestler, but that was usually that was before you needed a passport to go uh, teenage drinking in Mexico. Ah, uh-huh. you know. And now Mexico's fucking dangerous. So I don't go yeah. up there anymore. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I got. Man, you got many championships. I only got two under my belt. Hey, let's talk about that. Actually, you just the other day, as a matter of fact, last Sunday, we did a show for a brand new wrestling company called Rise, which stands for Respect, Integrity, Sportsmanship, and Excellence. Which is a brand new wrestling company, and they are amazing. They're from uh, Amarillo, Texas, run by. The, Damien Blood and Lilith St. Star, and they are Lily St. Star. I don't remember what she goes by. Uh, uh, or Lilith Blood, whatever. They're husband and wife, and they run this promotion. And it was really good. And uh, you were involved in a in a crazy match. It was a, uh, what was that? It was a scramble match, I guess? Yeah, it was a triple threat scramble triple match threat with threat. myself. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin, well, I, he has a long name. I would just say Benjamin Cumberbatch and yeah. uh, Chris Wolf. Yeah. And that the stipulation in that match was you had to go to the time limit, 
And there's several title changes during that. And whoever, when the time ran out, whoever was champion left as champion, right? Correct, correct. So Cumberbatch correct. came in as champion. And he left as champion. But you won the championship twice. Yes. Off one, once off Cumberbatch and once off Chris Wolf, right? Correct. Okay, correct. cool. All right, so you won the title twice. Yes. It's, it's called the New Era Wrestling 5280 Championship. Okay. Yeah. That's that's out of promotion in Colorado called New Era Wrestling. Right. I mean, it looks like an awesome promotion, man. I'm gonna have to get to Colorado soon. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'd like to go to Colorado anyway, if you know what I mean. Oh but. yeah, I bet you love to indulge <laughs> in the culture of Colorado. Oh well, yeah, I'd like to get something to eat, if you know what I mean. Well, I'm up there. But, uh, oh yeah, something very edible. From, yeah, <laughs> edible and sweet. <laughs> but uh, all right, so well, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about our inspirations. Um, you know, like I said, uh, well. Growing up to me, like you know, like like I said, I'm a little bit older than you are. So growing up to me, I was the '80s and '90s. I, I got into watching professional wrestling when I was four years old. My mother watched it every uh, Saturday, and it, I just I, I fell in love with uh, uh, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan was the be all end all to me. He was uh, like I didn't even care about anybody else. And if you and if I saw a match where Hulk Hogan lost, it was like the worst week of my life Ooh, at that really? young age. Yeah. I was like, nobody can beat him, you know, and, and that stayed kind of like the same for me growing up. He was still my favorite. And then I started like paying attention when I, you know, in the nineties, I started paying attention to like, you know, the cruiserweights. And I'll never be able to wrestle like a cruiserweight. I knew I would never be able to wrestle like a cruiserweight. Shoot, these days, the time and age, guys, your size are doing more cruiserweight moves than cruiserweights. You don't know, like KO and stuff like Kevin Owens and those guys? Like Keith Lee. Keith Lee is a bad son of a bitch, uh, man. Oh my man. God. Braun Strowman, he's do- Braun Strowman. He, you catch him doing some cruiserweight Braun stuff every now and then. Braun Strowman like, can wrestle. Holy crap! Yes, he can. I grew up, uh, you know, just loving the, loving everything about it, and then uh, you know, paying more and more attention to other wrestlers besides Hogan. You know, like uh, like the cruiserweights, like I said, like Chris Jericho is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, and he was mine uh, too. He was like the greatest cruiserweight during the WCW era while he was there when I was watching and. Um, I wanted to be like him. Like, as a matter of fact, the first time I saw the walls of Jericho, what was it called back then? The Lion Tamer. The Lion Tamer. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, just it's just the Boston Crab, isn't it? Like, that, that's what it yeah, is, right? More advanced you know? version of the Boston yeah, Crab. Like, more elevated, right? Like, yes. But, yeah, I remember seeing that, and I was like, man, that looks like it hurts. And then I remember, like, you know, don't do this, kids. But I was at school, like, putting my buddies in the Boston Crab and the oh, trust me, Scorpion friend, Death Lock. And- one of my first ever fights at school was over uh, if wrestling, like, somebody told me wrestling was fake. Yeah. And I put him in a Boston Crab. I'm like, does that feel fake to you? Does that feel fake to you? I did the same thing to this fat kid <laughs> when I was in school. He was, uh, he was talking about it being fake. And I said, you know what? And I slapped the cross face on him. Oh, nice. And he was crying. Turns out, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, so I legit, like, hurt this fucking kid, you know. But, you know, I was, like, nice. in eighth grade, and, you know, I was just being a stupid ass. But, like, I, I never, I still won't, you know, like, it's disrespectful to call it fake because it's not fake. It's not. It's not fake. It's not. It's, it's sports entertainment. And, you know, like, that that's what we're here to talk about is, like, what, what what entertained us? What inspired? Well, yeah, what got us to going where we're at? I mean, because we're both, you know, we're both very, we're both pretty well known in the independent scene of wrestling. Uh, not too well known yet for me, but well, you're getting there, man. I'm trying to get there, man. See, uh, my inspiration is more the tag team wrestling. You know, I love the cruiserweights too, yeah, and singles and all that. But when tag team wrestling came on, I just sat there. I was quiet. I jumped up and down into the exciting moments. I I fell in love with the Legion of Doom first. Yeah, definitely. The Legion of Doom or the Raw Warriors, whichever one you want to call them. I mean, same thing. Like it was the Legion of Doom, and since I was more of a WCW mark, I was into Legion of Doom, Harlem Heat, The Outsiders. You know, those those are my tag teams. I'll, and then, you know, all of a sudden, I see this show called ECW. And it was a different type of wrestling that I was used to seeing. I wasn't seeing this in WCW or WWF. And that was this tag team called the Dudleys. 
Oh yeah, the Dudleys, man. Bubba Ray and Devon. Still, like, uh, it's 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 funny you mentioned that. That that's my all time favorite tag team. Mine too. The all time favorite. Like before them, it was, uh, like I said, you know, not really paying attention until the '90s. I didn't really pay attention, <clears throat> and I think it was more the fact that they were, you know, with Hogan and those guys. Uh, it was the outsiders for me. Man, it was. Man. Kevin, yeah, yeah, we just lost power. Thank God that this has got a battery backup. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were the were the big thing for me. And uh, whoa, that's a big loud thunder. <laughs> wow. But um, later on, you know, like watching tag teams and like when I saw the Dudley Death Drop for the first time, I thought that I was like, how is that guy not dead? Oh, but they yeah. just did that on you know. And it was, it was like, it was crazy for me to like see that. And I'm like, these, these guys do this and take this all the time. So anyway, like 2002 comes along. I just graduated high school in May of that year. And I knew that I wanted to go off and train to do this. So I found a, I found a little wrestling school and I went there and uh, I started learning. And um, it was a big school. There was like uh 64 people and they used two different uh, buildings for these training things and when it was all over I think it was five of us graduated wow. yeah there's a, there a huge dropout in training yeah I, I mean I've seen that too in the in Killer Brooks uh, school yeah yeah when I was in Killer Brooks I seen so many people come and go come and go come and go and we had uh Let's see, there was like 64, five of us graduated, three of us got offers to go places and uh, start, you know, start taking bookings. And, you know, as a rookie, you know, in this business, you, you don't start off just go out there and win in all your matches and stuff. Your, your job is to make the other guys look good. You know? Correct. You know, and, and, that's, and that's what we did. You know, we... <laughs> I don't think I want to match for six months, you know, I, I don't think so. I, and, and I was lucky to do that, you know, Oh, trust me at NAWA. Mm -hmm. I've only like, I've been like, I've been doing this since 2012. NAWA is my home company and I've only won one match. Really? In five years? In five years, only one match. Man. Man. I Which was a tag team match. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Myself and Tejano Kid. Tejano Kid, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, like, with, which, I mean, it was funny because I think, I think, I guess a lot of promoters see me as a tag team guy. And it was just funny because, I mean, well, not all promoters, but some do see me as th that way. Um, well, you yeah. are a tag team wrestler. I mean, you can tell like by the way you work. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, which I have nothing. I I mean, I'll do. I can do it all. Singles, tag no, team, I know, I know. Yeah. cruiserweight. But yeah, like, and it all started when I was a kid. You know, yeah. I, and I always wanted to be a tag team wrestler, like watching teams like the Dudleys, Edge and Christian, the Hardys. Matter of fact, uh, Harlem Heat, uh, mm -hmm. the Outsiders. I'll even go to TNA promotions like Beer Money, Team Canada. Yeah, um, there you go. Yeah, who else can I name? Uh, just all types of tag team I, action. I tell you, uh, like when I was younger, uh, speaking of tag teams, uh, like you know, you mentioned Legion of Doom. I really liked them, but uh, I'm going to go even uh, around the same era. I was I was actually a fan of. Um, uh, the Rockers, Janetti and uh, uh, Janetti Michaels. and Michaels, and yeah. not a bad choice, man. Those guys, but the Rock and Roll Express. You want to go old school? The Rock and Roll Express, uh, uh, Gibson and uh, Morton. Morton, yeah. Those guys, they kept it pretty basic, but the way they, the, the charisma that those two had, you know, when they were in the ring, oh, and you know, and they just oh, well, they went into Hall of Fame this year. Yes, they the, did. The WWE Hall of Fame this year, and I was really happy. I think it was long overdue. I was I was happy that they were finally put in there. They were one of my all time favorites, and uh, I was really uh, the, some of the matches they had with the Midnight Express. You 
know, the, the feud between them was uh, oh, yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, but as far as, I guess, I, well, we kind of veered off point here, but um, let, I'm going to go ahead and talk about tag team. You and I actually tagged against each other last month in Oklahoma for BCW in the BCW Tag Team Tournament. You remember that? Yes, yes. You, great you, match. It was a great match. You great match. and your partner, CJ Ward, Ward, against me and my partner at the time, Brock Landers. We had a we had a really good match. It was back and forth the whole time. I just I mostly beat the hell out of your partner that match. Oh but, yeah, yeah, oh man. yeah. I mean, he got some good stuff in on you me. Know, that, that little son bitch knows how to work. Oh, CJ Ward, yeah, <laughs> great guy. Yeah, great guy, great worker. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I'm looking forward to working with him, man. I'm looking forward to it too. And you know, I gotta. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little bit of props here, uh, since you know, this is a a real life uh, podcast. Yeah, I mean this. Is- uh, you know, this ain't kayfabe, so. Well, I know, yeah. We uh, Brock and I were wondering what we, because we knew we were going to go over and win the match. Uh, we were trying to think of a good uh, finish to hit on uh, on you for the end of the match. And uh, it was actually your idea to come up with this combination of Brock's finisher, which is the coup de grace, the double stomp. Yep. But he does it to your back. Exactly. So exactly. I set you up for the kill switch or unpretty or whatever you'd like to call that move. And um, I had you lined up for that, and then Brock comes off the top with the stomp to your back, and I sit out, and with, and your face lands on the mat, and uh, it was it was just really intense. Like the crowd popped for it. They, yes. they, they were like, "Holy shit, he's not like, getting up from that." Nobody ever seen nothing yeah. like that before. And you get and you know, and I came up with a name for it, and I thought yeah. it was really good. It's a it, good name for it. I called it. I named it after one of my favorite heavy metal songs. Plus, my gimmick is a priest. And Brock's diving off the top rope, so we called it Holy Diver. And uh, yeah, only if you and Brock would to stay a tag team. Yeah, that would that would be fun. That'd be great. But I'm more of a singles worker. But yeah, you are. And more so of a is he. But yet somehow <laughs> you're the tag team champion. Yeah, I am the tag team champion at, at BCW. Yeah, that happened later on that night, and I'll get into the details on how that happened here in a minute. I mean, yeah, I never won a tag team title, which, but I'm a part of many tag teams, mm-hmm. like on, on the NBC right now. No, you're a part of the. Pretty successful tag team in uh, Anarchy Championship Wrestling, right? I wouldn't That's say the awesome. most successful. I mean, no, we I said a pretty team. successful one. I mean, we're established. We're established. Myself and Tank Engine Tommy, uh, you know, right. we we have this whole thing going on. What are y'all it, called? What, what's your team? Soul Train. Soul Train. I like yes. that. It's a Soul Train. Yes, I like yes. that. That's pretty cool. I mean, and we're going to be at Anarchy, you know. Doing our thing this uh, at the next ACW show. Yeah, plug your show. When's your next show? May the twenty first, man. Twenty first. Prom night, baby. And it's gonna be Prom hosted night. by the infamous Sean Vex. Sean Vex is hosted. Oh, yes. Sean Vex is an special old, guest host. An old friend of mine. I actually got the opportunity. I wrestled him once, ironically, in a tag team match. His uh, partner was a guy named Hot Sauce Marco Rivera. It was a six person tag. It was me. Chewie Martinez and his his girlfriend or wife, I can't remember her name, I really wish I could, uh, against Fex, Hot Sauce, and Diamond Icy. And uh, we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of charisma in that match. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I love that guy, man. That was fun. that was ten years ago. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I love the guy. Matter of fact, one thing about Sean Fex, I don't even think he knows this, but he is the reason. That I like that was a time where I almost gave up on wrestling. Yeah, just completely gave up, and I said, "I'm gonna just quit doing this. It's not worth it anymore." Yeah, but he is actually the reason I continued on today. Oh, right on. That's cool. I don't even think he knows that. Oh, really? Yeah, but he is the reason that I'm still doing this. I bet if he hears this, he'll know it. <laughs> oh, I bet. I'm gonna tag him on here so I'm sure he'll see it. But um, yeah, but yeah, there's me. Then uh, there's also uh my. I, at OSW, I was also I was also part of another tag team with Daniel King uh-huh. from like one of the NWA Top of Texas workers. We right. called ourselves Black Excellence. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah. cool. And then uh, another tag team at Square Circle Pro, myself and uh, Tony Morales. Okay. Which I mean, we're still on losing streak, but I mean that at, at Square Circle Pro, they also see me as a tag team guy. Yeah. Which I don't see that as a negative. When right. I t- when I say most promoters see me as a tag team guy, I, like they, people think 
I'm saying negative about that. I'm really not. I right. love being a tag team. I love being a tag team guy. I really do. Now I see my now in Oklahoma, you know, I'm more of a singles guy. Right. In Oklahoma. Yeah, you've only had one tag team match in Oklahoma. Two tag team. Two matches. tag team matches, right? Yeah, two tag team matches. But I mean, I feel like you you tagged I, with Russo the first time. Yes, man. Rick Russo, Rick man. Russo against. Uh, Brad Sanders and Cody Burns. I don't know why I was going to call them bald discipline for some reason. Well, because they're both bald. Yeah, of it's course. burning discipline. That's what it is. Yeah. Cody Burns and Brad yes. Sanders. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But, um, I mean, if that was a way I could get one of my tag team partners up to Oklahoma. You want to get Thomas up there, don't you? Take, I wish Thomas take, would, but, I mean, because, I mean, that. Out of all my tag teams, me and him would like that's the most established one of all the tag teams I'm in. Right on, yeah. Heck, if we can get if we can get Justin Taylor up there, I would love to tag with him. Uh, I just love to get him up there. Oh my god, he can work. I would love to tag with him. I mean, Jackson would have to be a heel. Well, he could do it, man. He did it for uh, yeah. two years there in uh, OSW. Yeah, because I, I feel like me and Jason Taylor would make a good tag team, actually. I'll tell you this, man. I actually, I, I'm going to get the opportunity to work with him on May 20th at Squared Circle Pro in the six-sided suicide elimination match. And uh, let's talk about Squared Circle Pro for a minute. Squared Circle Pro yes. is is just a great place to work. It's one of my absolute favorite places to work. My favorites, too, man. And... Uh, you know they've been kind enough to give me the, you know the top heel spot there, and um, and you know they bring in my guys from God's work and uh, which is one I really like. I feel like God's work is one of the most underrated stables in in this on the indie scene. Well, I appreciate that, but we're 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 getting up there. You know we're making waves, and you know I mean I keep I winning mean, these titles. I guess I'm going to keep I making. Mean, you know yeah, you guys got to take over the Southwest, man. Well, we're working on it, brother. We're, I mean, you know, next state, New Mexico or something like that. New Mexico. Yeah, I'd like to go to New Mexico. I know that in July, uh, I'm going to Nebraska. Actually, we're going together. Yeah, Nebraska. yeah, yeah. You actually got me that booking, actually. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Mid-America Wrestling Association. Yeah. MWA. Yeah, where myself and Tank Engine Tommy will be a tag. We'll be tagging against the... Uh, yep, me, right? Yeah. We'll tagging against me and uh, Banana Bitch. Or Skip Terrific, right? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Skip can't, Terrible. I still can't get over that. I love, oh, I love, love you, Skip. Oh, no, we don't. No, I'm just playing. No, really, but, no, we love you, Skip. We really do. But, you know, you are the reason... You are the reason ribbing was invented. <laughs> I have to say. Yes. <laughs> but as far as... Um, uh, I keep getting off track, but as far as... Um, inspiration goes uh you know like we have our favorites and then you know we talked about this on the bump monkey mafia podcast and uh shout out to those guys yeah, uh shout out to bump monkey, bump monkey mafia, mafia. Yeah. thanks for having us on your show a couple times and uh and uh that was great and it actually gave us the idea for the name of this podcast the big time holy hour um it's what they called a couple of our episodes that we were on on there yeah but um anyway what i was saying is uh we're talking about uh we, everybody has their favorites and their inspirations on why they do this. Um, I want to talk about something we talked about on that podcast before. That this is our podcast, so we can talk about it in, like it's a new subject. Yes. Uh, favorite wrestler? Greatest wrestler of all time. Now, a lot of people, it's the same for them. It's not the same for me. I have my absolute favorite, and then I have, in my opinion, the greatest of all time. Now, my favorite wrestler is Brock Lesnar. I just think that, you know, as far as he goes, the the way that he's been pushed and, I mean, the, the physical specimen that he is, he can do pretty much anything. You know what I mean? And nobody will ever have a first run like he did. It'll never happen again because he's just a supreme athlete and just, you know, can do anything that he sets out to do. And he'll be the first to tell you that, or actually Paul Heyman will be the first to tell you that because Brock hardly ever talks because he doesn't have to. You know, but then, um, so that's my favorite. The greatest of all time, in my opinion, is Triple H. Uh, and there are several reasons why, but if you just look at the story progression of Triple H and um, how he's done everything, he's done it all. The only thing I can think of that he didn't do 
was what Brock Lesnar did, and that was break the Undertaker streak. You know, that, but that's the only thing I can think of that Triple H never did. And beat Goldberg clean. Okay, yeah, that's another thing that Brock Lesnar that did. nobody ever did. Brock Lesnar did it, except Brock Lesnar. Well, I'm just saying he's the only one that did it. But let's, let's go ahead and hear yours, man. I, I'm, I'm actually pretty anxious to hear yours because I don't remember your answers all from the. Well, the greatest uh, wrestler. Is. Are you gonna go greatest first? Yeah. I okay. mean, I gotta say Triple H, man. Okay, yeah. Because my favorite is actually hard to call. It, it really is. is. Okay. Like, because I, I mean, it's hard. Like, out of all the wrestlers, all the talented, like when you love wrestling, it's kind of. It's absolutely hard to pin hard down. Hard to pick a favorite. Yeah, yeah. But before him, for me, before Lesnar was even around, my favorite was a toss-up between the greatest Triple H and uh, Hulk Hogan. You know what I mean? Like I said, I was a tag team guy, so, yeah. I mean, I had favorite tag teams. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have a favorite specific wrestler. Let me ask you something. There's this big thing that's always been like, it, and it's been said for years. You had the Legion of Doom, and then you had Axe and Smash. Did you think that Axe and Smash was just like a straight-up direct rip-off of the Legion of Doom? Because that's something that I've heard for years that WCW had, you know, Legion of Doom. So WWE countered with Axe and Smash. What were they called again? They were they were Demolition. Demolition, that was it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, in wrestling, everything's a ripoff. Yeah, there's nothing original. The, there's anymore. nothing original, which is why I don't get why people, why Smarks rib on other people's gimmicks. Yeah, trust me. Then, yeah. Oh, yeah. Trust yeah. me. I know, too. Yeah, but, I hear it all the time. Um, let's see. Well, it was always a toss up because I mean, you could say that, but then there was other things that WWE ripped off of other companies as well. Yeah, like yep. the Attitude Era. That was the complete rip off of ECW. ECW. Yeah, or McMahon's heel boss thing. Miss the Miss Vince McMahon's Mr. McMahon character was a complete rip off of Eric Bischoff. Eric Bischoff did the heel boss thing first. About, about like a year, like a year. Yeah, before, exactly. Yeah. A year. So the fact that if you want to say is demolition a rip off, but you got to say this though, you got to admit McMahon did it better because Bischoff didn't do it as long and didn't go as crazy as McMahon did with it. You know? uh, when when Bischoff did it in WC, I mean WWE, I liked it. Yeah, he yeah. played this whole politic game. No, uh, while Mr. McMahon made himself seem insane. Like Eric Bischoff played this whole politic game, you know, where he picked favorites. Right. Yeah. It wasn't about favoritism with Mr. McMahon. It was about like just how insane he is. Yeah, definitely. So it was different types of heel bosses. But like yeah. so I can't say which one was better, because they played heel they, they played the boss in different ways. One was just insane, the other was just Man, was, was an that, asshole. Well, pretty much, pretty much, what he showed was what, what his what, what Bischoff's Hill gimmick was was a play off of what, at when my opinion, actually goes on in a bank. Okay. The whole politic yeah, yeah, game. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like, cause I mean, this, like, let's be real. This politics still happens today. There's no way you're gonna get away from it, and there's. And you're always a part of it. Whether you Dude, we were part of it earlier today. Like, for real. Like, with all this crap going on between the two promotions in Amarillo and getting thrown right in the middle of it, you know? Like, but we're not here to talk about that. That's, no, no, that's some negative shit. Not. That ain't our spot to talk we, about. Yeah, but, we definitely ain't going to do that. No. But uh, check out Rise next time they throw the show. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, I um, wanted to say this. Uh, I do remember, I think, I do remember hearing you say at one point, because you know, you said it was hard to pin down a favorite. Shawn Michaels was like... Yeah, Shawn Michaels is at least up there. Yeah. Top three. Yeah, definitely. I, I I actually met him back in 2002, uh, before I went off the train. He, We actually went to the same church in San Antonio. and he was, Oh, really? Yeah. He that's was awesome. Real cool. And that's when I found out his real name and everything, and... Uh, I was. I thought it was a goofy name because the pastor was up there naming all the new members of the church, and he said to Michael Hickenbottom, and uh, I was sitting there next to my friend Mike Connell, who was a guy I went to high school with, and I just started laughing. I was like Hickenbottom, you know. And, and he, we're sitting up in the balcony, and we're way up there. This this church was the size of an arena, 
It was Cornerstone oh, Church. I mean, you know? of course. Pastor of course. John Hagee, you know. So. Yeah, like, it, it, I mean, if it's a church that Shawn Michaels is going to, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's huge. a big church. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect to see him at a small church. Well, I look down. So just because, I mean, it, at a small church, he'll just be so crowded. Because well, everybody wants to go to the same church as Shawn Michaels. Well, I didn't even know he was going to church there. I just went to church there because my friend Michael. Oh, yeah, of course. There. But I looked down and, I, and I, he was like, that's who that is. And I was like, Oh my gosh, man! And I, and I was—I mean, I know I was there to worship the Lord, but I was just distracted because I was sitting right above him, like looking down. I was like, Shawn Michaels is sitting, you know, second row from the front of the church, and I'm way up here in the balcony. I just kept looking down because, you know, and I didn't go bother him or nothing because that would have been completely inappropriate at church. Oh, you know? of course, but, at church, man. But, uh, but like, you know, it was really cool to see him, and then find out, you know, that that was that, you know, that was a cool thing, and you know. That was kind of one thing that so really actually was there when he gave his life to God, man. Well, I was there. I mean, he had already done it. Well, he already, you done know, it but he, he was like it. a member of that church, and uh, like the thing was, it was that was really weird for me. It was like it kind of cemented my knowledge of wrestling being an alternate reality from actual reality. Oh yeah, because at that point, at that point though, I remember uh, it was around it was around that time, like a week earlier. Uh, when Triple H had crippled him and put him in a wheelchair, you know, uh, and then like I see him like f- you know five days later at church walking just fine and everything, and I was like, he's supposed to be in a wheelchair, you know, <laughs> like and I was like, oh man, okay, all right, I get it, you know, but it still didn't it didn't dampen my love for it no, or anything, of course not. you know. By the way, I got a question for you. What's up? What inspired your wrestling persona? Like this one, Father Page? Yes, yes. Man, there's yeah. a lot to that. Um, well. The look actually came from Edge, um, because uh, the gimmick I was doing before was was really it was, it was cool, but it was a metal head. I just came out there, I head banged to kick somebody's ass, and I left. Uh, you know, there was like there was no real charisma or nothing. I just you know, kind of like the Mojo Raleigh thing. You know, he just he's hyped all the time, and then he just runs away. So, it, is there anything outside of wrestling that inspired that? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, well, see, my 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 I remember the stories of my dad would tell me my dad. Grew up as a caretaker in a cemetery, uh, and uh, so did my uncle. And my dad and his brother and my grandfather uh, ran a cemetery in Oklahoma, and they would talk about how scary it was to live out there and stuff. Oh yeah, and uh, and I remember thinking, uh, I was like, "Well, I'm never going to do that shit. That sounds crazy as hell. I don't want to fucking you know." <laughs> like, and then I was like, "But um, they would say how scary it was to like live out there and like." Because their house was right next to the cemetery, oh, like right man. next to it, and he would like his window would like my dad's window faced the cemetery, and he remembers that uh, he told me that right near it, he remembered that there was a grave that he would go, and uh, he would look up at his window and he would see where that fresh dirt was down there where they had just buried someone and it was like 20 feet from his window. Oh. You know what I mean? And he would like look out and he said it was it was one it was a scary, scary experience. And I just started thinking about that growing up and I was just like, man, I'd like to do a dark kind of character, you know, something that you know, but then it ended up being, you know, like like the three influences I had were the look was from Edge, because I love the way Edge would come out in that trench coat, you know, the yeah. black trench coat. I always wanted to do something like that. I still haven't ever done that, by the way. <laughs> but I wanted to have that kind of charisma coming out and everything. And, you know, being in the Indies, we didn't have a whole lot of pyro in our entrances and stuff, you know. But, um, uh, as, and The Undertaker was a big part of it. You know, I was a big fan of The Undertaker. And uh, I, I liked the darkness perspective, you know. And for the first, uh, I'd say, four years of my career, I, I dyed my hair black and I dyed my beard black and I did the, I looked dark, but I was my, my character. I couldn't get over like my, my, I grew up my whole life. Everybody told me I was really funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I wanted to be like this funny asshole character. Well then, you know, that starts to fade off. People are getting used to the jokes I'm telling and, you know, a certain promoter promote uh, approached me about going super dark with the character. And I was like, uh, all right, you know, let's give it a try. And then, just, I did. It, it, yeah, no, it took off from there, man. Like, cause Mad Mike Payne was the guy that was with me at my first ever match as Father Page. I had a match. I remember the date exactly. As Father Page, my first match as Father Page was February twenty first 
2009 in Saginaw, Texas, which is a little suburb of Fort Worth. And uh, Mad Mike Payne, or Mikey as he's known now, was uh, was my partner or my you know manager, whatever you want to call him. Uh, and I showed up there and I had this huge choir robe I was going to wear out to the ring. He just happened to have a black suit jacket in his car. And it fit me perfectly. Nice. And I put it on and it looked way better with the priest collar than the than the, uh, the, choir, robe. the choir robe did. And I went and I looked in the mirror. I was like, I've got to buy a suit jacket, you know. So like a little bit of brother love the look, you know what I mean? But black instead of white. Yeah. Um, edge as far as the the uh, the attire as well. The Undertaker with the darkness aspect. And uh, I, I've got to say, like, you know. I had went before I'd even done that gimmick. I had come up with what I thought was, like we said earlier, nothing's original anymore. But I swear I'd never seen it done before. I came up with a finishing move that is basically, if you want to technically name it, like what it is, is a spin out reverse face buster um, that I called Padge's Peril. Well, when I became Father Padge, I changed the name to the Baptism by Fire. And I didn't ever see anybody use it. And uh, now uh, Bray Wyatt uses the exact same finishing move. And Bray Wyatt and myself are both dark characters with evil spiritual connections and stuff. So, yeah, what you were talking about earlier about people accusing people of ripping, I get it all the time. I get, oh, yeah. You know that. You've seen it. People... Trust me. Call me the Bray Wyatt ripoff or whatever. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't bother me enough to where I'm going to take time to get in some smarks face and be like, hey, listen here, you dumb fuck. You know, I was doing this. I was doing this fucking six years before Bray Wyatt, you know, when he was still a fucking Husky Harris, you know, wrestling in cowboy boots. Yeah. You know, yeah. by the way, I didn't mean to ruin your reality if you didn't know that Husky Harris was Bray Wyatt. But, uh, but yeah, so that that was the thing that inspired me. Like there were several things that inspired me, but mostly it was uh, the Rock. The Rock, as far as my persona at first, because he was so funny and quick on his feet, and and just said whatever popped into his brain, and yes. that's the way I was at first. And then a promoter came along and said, "I want to use you. I want to give you this spot, but I want you to do it this way, dark, and then raspy up your voice a little bit." You know, my voice is already raspy. Then he was like, take it to another level and speak like you have some kind of preacher's accent. Yeah. And that's what I do, you know what I mean? That, that, I mean, and that's what I do now. I mean, they, they even gave, he even gave me the, the nickname, the Dark Redeemer, which I love, by the way. I love that pretty, nickname. Pretty cool. Because before it was just the Holy One. And I still call myself the Holy One. Hell, it still says it on my tights. Whoa, back that shit up. I don't wear tights on my gi bottoms, yeah. you know. But, yeah, so that's where the inspiration for Father Patch came from. There's several of them there. But uh, what about you, man? Where'd you uh, Where'd you come up with the big time, uh, big time gimmick? Well, you gotta you gotta think. There's different big time personas, man. Like in, in Oklahoma, I'm more the arrogant, douchey character. Like yeah. everything I do is to either pay tribute or to make fun of something. So pretty much like in Oklahoma, the heel, arrogant, douchey. Everything like that. Yeah. Well, the wrestlers that it came from are people like The Miz, MVP, Chris Jericho, Ric Flair. You know, you know my mic work, my persona. Now, out the one, the inspiration <laughs> of wrestling, like I said, arrogant, douchey, selfish. So pretty much, Kanye West. Oh, I hate that guy. Yeah, I, I can see that, actually. Yeah, take Kanye a look, West, take man. Take a look at great I mean, yeah. I, I just think I'm the greatest man in the world. Where, right. That's where the greatest that's man in the world thing comes from. That's where the gimmick comes from? Because, yeah, I, I mean, know. think about it. Like, Kanye West thinks so highly of himself. Sure does. So now, now anybody who knows myself, grow, know me growing up, I'm completely humble. Yeah. I'm completely, like, you know... And Bebe even tell me, dude, you need to, you need more confidence in yourself, man. But in the ring, you're you're you're, you're personifying that. Yeah, like so I'm the I'm the complete opposite. Like I was the complete opposite of the man I used to be. Um, and I think I just think so. Like, but um, now the in Texas, the guy with the afro and that that, that just happy go lucky guy, right? You know, with the afro and everything like that. That's actually. 
It's actually a tribute to my grandmother. No shit. Like, cause she, like, yes. Okay. She, cause she, like, I'm not, I don't know if anybody knows, but I'm not the best dancer in the world. Oh, um, I didn't know. But I didn't by really. far, I just play it off well. Right but, on. But, yeah, it's actually a tribute to my grandmother. Okay. Uh, she used to love the whole black exploitation movies and everything like that. Like Blackula and... Uh, Blackula, like Superfly. Uh, and then one of my favorite shows is Black Dynamite, which she would have loved if she was allowed to see it. Black Dynamite. That was, that was, I saw the movie. I never saw the show. Oh, yeah. Uh, the show's a the cartoon, movie. isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah, the, the show and the movie, like, which my grandmother would have loved. Like, it's a, yeah, the whole black exploitation thing. Like, yeah, the pure baby face and just all happy, big time Reggie Lincoln. That you that you mainly see at ACW and uh every now and then at at Square Circle or at TCW. Let me say let me let me say this though. Uh, before that, you were doing like a seventies gimmick, right? Like, yeah, that's I'm, that's what I was talking about the seventies gimmick. Oh, you're still doing the seventies gimmick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you do yeah, have a huge places. you do have a huge afro, man. Oh it's, yeah, like. Every different promotion gets a different Reggie Lincoln. That's cool. J- just so, just so the world can see how different I can be. Right on, man. Uh, I, I could definitely yeah. appreciate that. But, you know, but yeah, like the whole seventies thing, the Afro Happy Go Lucky, you know, yeah. pure baby face, big time Reggie Lincoln. Yeah, that, that, that it's actually a tribute to my grandmother. Let a me lot say, a lot of people don't know that, but that's what it is. I want to say this. Um, you know, and if there's any promoters listening to this, we have been trying for almost a year and a half now to get a one-on-one match with each other, and nobody's booked it. Somebody always finds a way to mess it up. Like, it's always almost happened. Like, every time we we have worked with each other, but it's always been a gimmick match or a tag team match. And, uh, like, we had – the closest we had was September of last year was a triple threat elimination match with me – you and a guy named El Wapo, and I eliminated him, and then you and I went another what fifth, like ten minutes, yeah. and you eliminated me, and that was the only time you've ever pinned me. Yeah, like every other time it was like I go over on you, but I think every time it's been dirty, except the last time in Oklahoma. Actually, I was yeah. dirty. I kicked you in the nuts. No, no I mean, what well, actually the time before that, in the six man. Six man. Yeah. That, uh, and, and hitting Oklahoma. Oh, that's right. I didn't do nothing dirty in that no, match. No kind of dirty no. moves at all. You were doing all the dirty moves in that match. <laughs> on Somewhat. On everybody. Well, I think you were more just getting over as a heel because yeah. all the shit you were talking. You know, you grabbed my oh. title out of my hand and held it up like you'd won the damn thing. And then, oh, like, yeah. It was only appropriate that I was the one to eliminate you. you know? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I think, it, and, but then everybody cheered for you after that. Well, I had my own little cheering section, yeah. They did cheer for me because they because they really didn't want you to do anything in that match. No, they didn't. They were like they thought. I think a lot of them thought you were going to win that damn thing. Oh man! And then like when see like the first guy that got eliminated was that, that rookie Tristan, Tristan Thorne, Thorne which, by one of the most biggest athletic big dudes I've ever seen, Sam Stackhouse. That guy hit a spin back kick, a Pele kick, a Pele man. kick on Tristan. On- and I was like, that dude is 400 pounds. How did he do that? You know? Yeah, I know. And then, and then I got the second elimination on you. And then I eliminated Brock Landers and then Sam Stack. I won the whole match, but man, let's talk about that. Let's not talk about that match. That was a fun match. But here, that, this brings me to my next point real quick. And that is, I want to talk about if you have a top three of your own personal favorite matches that you've ever had. But I want to start with you this time because I'm always starting these Ooh. subjects out. So do you have a top three of your favorite matches and or best matches that you've ever had? Well, let's see. Top three? Yeah. Hmm. First, I have to say this tag team match I had at Square Circle Pro. Um, okay. With the... Uh, with... Nolan Phillips and Ryan Justice versus me and Tony Morales. But it was Nolan. They, they called themselves Intelligent Design, right? Yeah. Which I'm, I'm still upset at them for 
passing up the opportunity to call themselves Nolan Ryan. Right, that just makes sense. It, it makes perfect sense. It's both their first names. Yeah, exactly. But I guess they don't like baseball. Don't but, know. yeah, that was one of my favorite matches. Uh, They went over on us. Yeah. But that was one of my favorite matches. That was just a couple months ago, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then, then let's see, another one of my favorite matches. But another one of my favorite matches, not even online. Um, but it's another tag team match. Matter of fact, my top three favorite matches, I think, are tag teams. Really? Yes, yes. Well, that's because you're a tag team specialist, though. That's, that's your deal. Yeah, right? yeah. There's nothing I mean, wrong with that. You like no, what no. you like. I uh, like being a singles match wrestler. Uh, let's see. The second one would be myself and uh, Tank Engine Tommy when we faced the Halloween crew at ACW. Right on. Which was the Halloween crew that's uh, the Black Rocker and uh, Jack O'Lantern. That's, that's that guy's name? Yeah. Wow. Okay. They had a third guy named uh, Chris Mastry. All right. But uh, he wasn't there that night. Okay. So I love how they. I love how they just just had these names. But um, yeah, like it was a match that that solidified the tag team that Thomas and myself are. Okay. Like the crowd was just so into it. Like, <laughs> let them know we're here, we're, we're and that we're established, that we're doing this now. And, right on, right on. And then the uh, last was a, uh, I gotta say, uh, the Oklahoma, in Oklahoma at BCW, another ma- tag team match with myself and a uh, Rick Russo with. With against burning discipline, uh, Cody Burns and Brad Sanders. Right on. Those are those two guys are so talented, man. Oh yeah. Like that is now, and you wouldn't know it, but Brad's only been around about two years. Exactly. Like, uh, and, and so and that and that was just that first night as a tag team. They just met each other that night. That's right. Yeah. With a lot of people don't know, and they already had so much chemistry. Yeah. Like that on that don't happen often. That yeah. don't happen with anybody, but chemistry was just like that with them. Yeah, that, they'll, they'll make a great tag team at BCW. Oh yeah, they need to keep that going. Yeah, they yeah. they might need to travel together actually. Yeah, I think they do. Actually. But that's another one, one of my favorite tag teams. And then on top of that, like the same night, they like they didn't even know what gear they were wearing, and then all of a sudden they come out out of the dressing room in matching gear. Yeah, and they gear, didn't gear looked pretty similar. Yeah, like one well Brad had on trunks and Cody Burns had on a singlet. Yeah, but they matched. They match. They're yeah. both bald. They're both the same size, the same stature. Same facial hair. Everything. Same facial hair. All of that. Well, yeah. that was that. That was actually Terry Pantera's idea to put those two together, just because of how they looked so much together. But then, but the chemistry was just like that. And then in the back, they were talking. What's funny was they're, they're in the back. They were t- we we're just talking about random things, yeah. and they had so much in common. Yeah, dude. Like it's, it's they like, like the same music. You found your double. They do the same. They, like they. It's like that don't happen often, like oh, really? just right off the bat. That's a good take, but that was one. That's my other favorite match, okay. which they won that night. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm. They pinned your partner, didn't they? Yes, yes. Yeah, they I mean, they got over dirty, but that's still one of my favorite matches. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's crazy. How most of my favorite matches are matches I did not win. Right. Yeah. There you go. Man. That's good. But it don't have to be. No, I don't. You know, it's, as long as the match is good, because like because yeah. wins and losses, you know, because yeah, people in Oklahoma, the pe- the fans in Oklahoma, after the show, they'll walk up to me and say, and tell me that match with you and uh, Cody Burns and Ru- when you teamed up with Russo, mm-hmm. like, that's one of my favorite matches I ever seen. Yeah, like they they still tell me this to today. Like yes, they might boo me and everything now, like because yeah. I mean they they like I'm well, grateful to BC. I'm grateful to BCW for letting me be their top heel. Uh, but, yeah, they said that's one of their favorite matches ever. Yeah. Like, I, I had a, I had like four different fans walk up to me and tell me that. They they also tell me they missed the Afro, but they say that's one of their favorite matches they ever watched, man. They wish they, that could happen again and right. again. Cool, man. What it's, about you, man? Well, uh, top three is fuck, it's so hard. Uh, well, um, I gotta go with uh, 
we were just talking about it. Uh, number three would be that uh, that Hinton Casino match, the six. Oh, the six, six man, the six pack elimination. Yeah, you look so strong in that man. I you did look great. Man. I went in champion and left champion. You know, and I eliminated five other guys to, to do it. And uh, and I mean, it, if it wasn't for the other good workers in that match, it wouldn't have made me look as good as it did. You know, but uh, I mean, I hit I hit four different finishers in that match. You know, like I hit I hit my my normal one, the baptism on you. Yeah, and then I hit the end of days on Landers. I knocked out um, Dean Lambert enabling with a bicycle kick. Yeah, with a bicycle kick, enabling Landers to beat him with a coup de grace, and then I super kicked Sam Stackhouse twice, you know, to pin him. So I mean, that that match in itself, just the the whole story behind it was great. Like, cause me and Sam looked like the two strongest dudes in the match. You know what I mean? And then we had you guys playing y'all's part to help that happen. Yeah, so that looked great. Stackhouse, man. Stackhouse, I couldn't believe it. Stackhouse, Sam Stackhouse is like 400 pounds. And he can do a moonsault like he's a cruiserweight. It's just, it's amazing. And thank God I moved out of the way of that fucking moonsault. Cause, I don't know. If he's done that more, I bet you it doesn't feel as like, I bet you it doesn't feel as bad as what people think. Like, it, it might not, man. And uh, it, was, it was a great match. I had a great time. And, you know, we set a standard that night because that was the first match at that show. You know what I mean? That was the curtain jerk at that show. Yeah. And we went in total from curtain to curtain 23 minutes. You know, that was, that was a good match. It was a lot of fun. The crowd was really into it. The crowd hated you and me at the beginning of it and was cheering me by the end of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I think they were, I think they were cheering you. You, I, you gained so much of their respect. I did because I, I won a match there without doing anything dirty. You know what I mean? Yep. I didn't cheat once. I don't think I did anything dirty that whole match. So that that right there would be number three for me. And I guess if we're talking all time, number two actually was a month ago for me. Uh, I fought or I had a match with the number one wrestler in the entire state of Oklahoma. Drake Gallows yes, man. at the uh, Mid-South Arena, and I was defending my title again, and it was, uh, it was, uh, it was supposed to be just a regular match, and we fought all over that arena. We fought through the crowd, uh, you know, up against the guardrails, we were pushing security guards out of the way, we were fighting up in the stands, and I threw him out of the stands to the floor, he hit his head on the guardrail, I was actually genuinely worried about him. And uh, we ended up, you know, having a real good match. I went over at the end with the baptism. And then, uh, you know, I, I ended up winning the match. It was a real good match. Uh, I can't say enough good things about Drake Gallows. He's not just a great worker, wrestler, but he is a hell of a promoter and knows exactly what he's doing when it comes to that stuff. And then, uh, let's see, number one for me will probably, until I have a better match, Will be. Uh, I had a match in January of 2010 in Uvalde, Texas, which is actually where I graduated high school from. I had a two out of three falls match with a guy named Johnny Damage, and um, it was two out of three falls, and it was. Uh, we went 20, maybe 22, 23 minutes, and it was. Uh, you know, I, I just started the whole God's Work stable, so there was just me and two other guys, and. Uh, a guy by the name of Deacon uh, Chaos and Deacon Destruction, Mad Mike Payne. And we um, we had this uh, match, me and Johnny Damage did, and it was two out of three falls, and he got the first fall on me in like seven minutes. Hit me with a super kick and then a moonsault off the top rope. And uh, he pinned me. And then we went another like ten minutes, and I... Uh, I got the ref distracted by Deacon Chaos, and Deacon uh, Payne slid me in a kendo stick. And this was crazy in ending to this match. I reached back from one end of the arena to the other, boom, hit damage in the head with that kendo stick, and I slid it out. And I covered him and hooked the leg, got the three count. And I walked around and let the crowd boo me real bad for a sec, you know? And then I got up next to him, and I kneeled down on him with my knee on his chest in prayer position and got the second three count nice. right in a row. Oh, and the man. fucking place was pissed off. Oh, man. And when we got back there, man, we just hugged each other, told each other we loved each other, and it was the best match that we had 
ever had, like not just between the two of us, but like in our careers, because we hit so many spots in that match, dude. Like he hit me, he hit my big ass because he was like 210 pounds. And he hit my big 270 pound ass with a fucking blue thunder bomb. Nice. And yeah, and he hit me with a moonsault. And he was, you know, he's one of the only guys that could just like pick me up and walk around with me because the dude is fucking strong, man. He could really? like walk around with me in a scoop slam position and scoop slam me. And like, like he was, you know, he was fresh out of the army as soon as he got to training. Yeah. Guys, so he was strong. And he was one of the most natural, gifted wrestlers I've ever seen. And unfortunately, he had to uh, stop early and he had nothing but up. He could have just gone. He could have gone way further than anybody I've ever seen. Like, because he did not. Nothing bothered him. He, no risk at all bothered him when it came to anything in the ring. Like, like, like the third day, like I knew him. I remember he was in training. He'd been in training for a few months when I met him, and he took my uh, tag finisher, which at the time was a. I'd get the guy up for a power bomb, and when they're on the way down, my partner would come off the top rope with a clothesline. Nice. And he took that and he landed on his head and it scared the shit out of us. Pretty much the doomsday device. Kind of, but that, you know, that that was an electric chair. Uh, you know, but mine was a power bomb. He's like sitting on my shoulders right here. And, you know, my partner and fucking guy at the time, man. tattoo freak, Bernie, whatever you want to call him, come off the top rope with a clothesline. And, you know, but Anyway, so yeah, that was my number one match I, uh, I've ever had. Uh, it's it's, and I don't know if I'll ever have a better match than that. Yeah. As far as emotional wise, storyline wise, I, I recently had a thirteen month long feud with Terry Pantera. Yeah. And as far as the story goes, that was fucking amazing. That yeah, was. That was an amazing story to tell because I showed up there. With my brother, who's actually the character of Cardinal Sin, to take over BCW. And in a sense, I did it, but I did it in a really messed up way. Like, a different way than you would have planned. Like, it took me 13 months to do it. Uh, actually, it took... After the feud was over, I got everybody on my side by doing what's known in the business as a face turn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which was... Uh, We'll go ahead and talk about that. We'll, we'll swing back to what happened earlier. When we, you and I wrestled each other in the um, the tag team semifinals, yeah. when it was you and CJ against myself and Landers, yeah, and we went over on you guys and won that one, and we moved on to the finals. It was me and Brock against uh, Terry Pantera again, and his partner, Tick, the American Outlaw, who is just a nice guy. Oh, yeah. Tick is a nice dude. Genuine guy. Tick had been out of the business for a long time, and Terry asked him to come and be his partner in this tag tournament. And the rules for the tag team tournament finals was impulse, impulse rules, which impulse rules are it's a two-fall match, and anyone that gets a pin on the either side, like if one guy from one team gets a pin, he's already the first half of the tag titles. Him and the guy he pinned are done. And it's down to the other two. Well, I pinned Tick after a super kick, a little outside interference from Cardinal Sin. Uh, a super kick, I pinned Tick, so I was done, and Tick was done, so I was already one half of the tag team champions. Yeah. Well, then Brock, my partner, went up against Terry, and Terry pinned him with a Pantera twist, which is basically a twist of fate with a little, well, a little twist on it. Yeah. And uh, so that made me and Terry. Uh, tag team champions together. So what was really cool about that was we went from, as far as the storyline kayfabe goes, complete 100% disdain and hatred towards each other to win the match. Because the feud lasted from October of 2015 and ended November of 2016. Yep. It was over. It was completely over. We had our one final match, and I was fortunate enough to win that match. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that doesn't hardly ever happen where the heel, because until recently I was the biggest heel BCW's ever had. You know what yeah. I mean? I was until the end of my match. <laughs> you know, uh, the, this most recent show. But um, yeah, you worried about that? So I pinned I pinned Terry the very last match we had against each other, and Bud Barnes, big Mister Barnes, come out and attack Terry, reignite an old feud between them two, 
And I was trying to pull him off saying, hey, you know, this is over, you know, as far as the story goes. And I was like, hey, this is over, this is over. And he pushed me, so I super kicked him. And he was all thrown off balance. And me and Terry just looked at each other, and we grabbed him, and fucking boom. You know, we hit him with a double STO, and the bud, you know, rolls out of the ring. And it's just all good. Yeah, big Bud Barnes, yeah. Uh, I thought that was, the, I'm thinking about a uh, rock. No, that happened at the yeah. show. Yeah, the, the, the last show. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So um, Barnes gets rolled out of the ring, and Terry grabs the mic, and you know, to to really elevate the story, he goes, "I just need to know, did you have anything to do with that?" And I straight up said, "I don't even know who the hell that was." And he he says, "It's over." He puts his hand out, we shake hands, and I said, "Hell no, not after 13 months." I pull him in, give him a huge hug, right in the middle of the ring. We, you know, I teased it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I did tease it, but we didn't know that was going to happen yet. You know, yeah. We hugged it out. We were both. Just tears in our eyes, raising each other's arms, because we that, this thing was over. Yeah, you know, we thought we, we we thought this was it. You know, I mean, we're both going to go our separate ways. We're both going to be in BCW, but our our feud is over with. You know, and I'm proud as shit to say, with Terry's help, I wrote this whole story. You know what I mean? I wrote oh, yeah. this whole story, oh, yeah. and I was happy as shit to do it. And um, then he came up with the idea, of, or I think it was actually uh, the former Booker Mike uh, came up. With the uh, with the idea to uh, to have me and Terry win the tag team titles in a, in a unique way, very unique way. And uh, when it when it ended up going down that way, it was uh, the the pop, the crowd reaction that the night. Crowd was the loudest the loudest I've ever heard it be. Because um, what happened was well to to bring that up. What happened was I made a heel turn. You did make a heel turn. Well, you made earlier a heel turn that, earlier that night. Yeah, earlier that night. Because when you and CJ lost to me and Brock, you, like, you know, as far as the story goes, you snapped. Like, you literally snapped in two ways. You got pissed off, and then you broke CJ's arm in CJ's hometown. <laughs> yeah, the hometown. I, tur- I, I, I made a heel turn and turned my back on the hometown hero. And then you broke his arm. Yeah, you know, so the whole place was booing you, and then when you came out and attacked Terry because Terry had been screwing you over, uh, kayfabe, you know, kayfabe all, was yeah, yeah all, for all these these weeks and months. Yeah, like you screwed me out of the the BCW heavyweight title. Uh huh. Like, so I mean, that's a story you got to continue on with. You can't just leave it. <laughs> no, no, yeah, you and Brock are gonna more than likely be Terry and I. Well, not more than likely, definitely gonna be Terry and I's first title defense. You know, uh, tag team title defense. Yeah, which that's going to be awesome. That's going to be a great match because I am going to kick the shit out of you guys, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll just let Terry pin you guys. <laughs> I'm so you kidding. do all the dirty work. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen me work? All I do yeah. is dirty work. <laughs> but uh, oh. but yeah, I just want to say one thing, man. Like I went into that night, that night, this last uh, BCW show on April eighth. I went in there. Uh, anyway, yeah, I went in there that night as the biggest heel. Like, nobody got more heat than me, you know, negative reaction than me at BCW. And uh, I went in there that night as a big heel. You went in as a face. And by the time the night was over, it flipped. Complete switcheroo. Like, the crowd is begging me to kick your ass, you know? Like, <laughs> the crowd hated that you went over on me dirty. Yeah, they hated that. They, they hated that. But then when you kicked, or when you broke CJ's arm, in his hometown in front of all the... And then I called Terry out and told him, I'm coming for you. Yeah. So, like, at the end of the night, when Brock and I had our match, and I won my half, and Brock lost his half, he attacked my brother, you know, Cardinal Sin, and you attacked Terry, and then Brock turned his and attacks me, and then, you know, Terry suplexes you, and then I super kicked Brock, when Terry had him up on his shoulders... And then I shrugged my shoulders. I put my hand out. Terry grabbed my hand. We embraced. You know, we hugged. The place, I thought the roof was going to come off that yeah. fucking place, you know? And then, like, you know, he asked me to say something after he was done talking shit to you guys. Yeah. And then when I said what I said, I, I saw you. You were trying not to mark out. But like, <laughs> me, me and Brock just looked at each other like, did he really just do that? <laughs> I know. It was hard. It was, you know, good thing. The professionalism, le- professionalism level that you have, you were able to like not mark out for that. Yeah. Because I remember you, when you came back stage, you're like, I was really trying not to mark out. I can't believe Father Pat's <laughs> face. I was like, I can't believe it. I wasn't planning on doing it. You know? Yeah, like, I, yeah I noticed. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, 
Like, because you had that look on the face, like, what did I just do? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what I was did like, I just I've, do? I've only been a career long heel, but I guess I'll try this other shit, you know? Like, I mean, like, cause, let's, let's be honest, a work could only be a certain way for so long until yeah. I guess ten it, years it has to change. Is, ten years is a ten years is a as a heel, I guess. You know, it's time to like. I mean, let, let's not get that confused. I am, I am a face at BCW, but I am a heel ever. Oh yeah. Else. Yeah, I'm the top heel at Squared Circle. Well, you know? I, I mean, I'm still I'm babyface almost everywhere in Texas, except in AWA. I gotta say, I think you're a heel at Rise. I don't know yet. I, I think I think you healed it up pretty good last Sunday, man. To be honest. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I said I'm because I, I, I made it seem like it was all about me. I said when I'm. When I'm in them, because I told them when I'm in Amarillo, my this my show draws more than twenty people. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a couple hundred people with that last one. That was, yeah, that, that was, was a good, good show. show, especially for a first show ever for that. For yeah, that fed, yeah. You know? yeah. And man, you know they already won me over because they fed us, dude. Like we showed up. Yeah, yeah. we got tacos buffet. We got tacos catered to us, man. Mm-hmm. They, that, Tacos, cookies. That just became one of my favorite shows. Fucking water. Hell and, yeah. And on top of that, it was all free. Like that just became one of my favorite shows. But the real cool thing about Rise was it had seven different promotions under one roof. You know, and Damian Blood was smart for doing it that way. And and he, Lily he's showing unity amongst us all. Yeah. And other people want to talk their shit and blah blah blah. It's not my place to bring any of that up. I'm not naming any names. Jerk. Yeah, but, you know, I'll, people, I'll name it. Uh, people want to talk shit and like you know be upset that they had a more more successful show and you know, nobody was doing it. You know, in spite, in spite. Well, there was somebody doing it in spite, but it was after the fact. But it wasn't Ron Rise that was doing it in, in spite. But um, it ended up being a real good experience. Uh, we had a great, just a great fucking time there and. You know, I got to wrestle a guy. I've wrestled a bunch. I wrestled uh, Mikey. Um, the official record with Mikey and Padge is uh, there's a. Uh, I, I, I have uh, five wins. He has, I think, two or three over me. And yeah. we have a draw. And the draw was the other day. But, like, I feel bad because I knocked him silly. I've, I've knocked him out every time we've worked each other. Like, legit knocked him out. Because he does not realize, I am a big man, but I am incredibly fast. Yes. You know what I mean? With my kicks and stuff. And I, I always call him, but, like, he just, it's like, bam. It's, oh, oh, he hit me. Holy fuck, he hit me. You know? Like, yeah. Yeah. And I, I knocked him silly. And, you know, uh, the end spot was I gave him a sit-out power bomb that just took it all out of me and him. And no, neither one of us got up. So the match ended in a draw. Because it was BCW heavyweight champion against undisputed Oklahoma champion, title for title. Winner was going to get both titles when nobody won. So, I mean, but it ended up being a good match. And your match was great, man. I enjoyed the hell out of your oh, match. Yeah. yeah, you know you had a good match, man. Like, I enjoyed the hell out of you. You wrestled that Twilight guy and Chris Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That dude looks like the dude from Twilight. Dude, you wrestled a vampire and a wolf. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm just I'm kidding. still standing them all. Of me. <laughs> yeah, I don't like dark meat. Anyway, so we, <laughs> we had a real good show, and um, you know when it was all over, and you know we made the five and a half hour drive back that night. Uh, wrestling, brother. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I know. I do it all the time, but <clears throat> I've had some good. Um, but and you know. Long, long ass story short, you know, Rise is a great promotion. Can't wait to work there again. I believe they're shooting for October for their next show. Maybe sooner. I don't know. BCW, great BC, promotion. Yeah, BCW's got another one coming I mean, up. They better have it in early October, though. It's October 7th. Yeah, right. Rise? No, no. Uh, BCW. Yeah, October. Rise better have it in early Rise, October. I know, this is October 28th. Yeah. The product of my semen is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say the product <laughs> of my semen is coming? <laughs> What is wrong with you? This is an NC-17 podcast. Oh, wait, I guess that's okay then. 
Yeah. <laughs> seventeen. Yeah. Yeah, no. Well, we obviously. Uh, okay, I got a kid on the way. That's what I'm talking about. And it's due in October. That's why I did, that's why I got to be earth is doing late October. Don't be a faggot, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> that's an inside joke because I got into a little trouble for saying faggot on oh, the man. monkey mafia. I don't I don't condone. Or no, no. I'm totally fine with fat, gay marriage. Holy shit. Oh, I don't think there's any more room in my mouth for my other foot, but anyway. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to talk about a little thing on Hero. We were talking about our favorite wrestlers and our, and our uh, you know, inspirations, inspirations and the greatest wrestlers, in our opinion. Uh, I want to talk about the WWE, but I want to talk about our favorite matches in the WWE of all time, and I'll do another top three on that. Uh you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? Uh, I'll go first. Like top three matches. Top three matches of all time. Okay. Well, let's see. I'll start off with number one, which was a uh, HBK versus Y2J, WrestleMania 19. Man, that's your number one. Yeah, that's a great match. Well, man. at least when it comes to WWE matches. Well, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, HBK versus Y2J, man. Like that's not a lot of people's votes. But that's mine. I don't know why it's not, because that's a great fucking match. Excellent Holy match, shit, man. man. Holy shit. And then, uh, yeah, like, just a story it told, man. Mm-hmm. The, the guy that gets to face a man that he looked, he always looked up to. He yeah. wants to prove to himself that he could beat him. And then he didn't do it. And then he didn't do it because he realized that guy's just that much better. And that was. Oh man, the, and the way that that match ended, oh. like it was nothing huge. It was no super kick. There was no. That's not the way it ended. The way it ended was that crazy roll up that he got on him. Exactly. You know, right. and then right. when the whole thing was over and they hugged and you thought it was done, you thought it was done. No. Nope. And, and then Jericho rears back and just kicked Michaels right in the nuts, dude, and then face palmed him, and it was just like. I love JR's commentary on it. Goes just such a classless act after he just has the match of his lifetime. <laughs> and I was just like, yes, JR, yes. You know, right. I'm just sitting there mouth wide open, like, oh my uh, god, he just did that. And I'm like, this isn't over. You know, I was like, this I mean, mania is usually where shit ends. Mm-hmm. You know, but not for that, man. That's where he's still the team. Mm-hmm. And then number two, let's see, the first ever TLC match, man. Oh, of course, yeah. you know, yeah. me being the tag team, Mark. Well, that not even just tag team. That was just a great, crazy, nobody gives a fuck about their body match, you know? like I mean, it, That showed how much we are willing to sacrifice, man. Yeah, I mean, look, how many of those guys, like uh, Edge, you know, Edge doesn't wrestle anymore. Christian doesn't wrestle anymore. Uh, the Devon doesn't wrestle anymore, Mm-mm. you know, like. A lot of those guys, that that's for real, a career shortening like, match. A, a lot of fans don't realize we, we sacrifice our bodies on a daily basis. Yeah. For them. Like, yeah. And, and we're not even getting a, I mean, yeah, we're getting money. That That's a payout. But, like, the big payout that we're doing, we're wanting you to get to your feet and cheer or boo or just holy shit, you yes. know, or, or the more recent, this is awesome. That's, that's like an orgasm to us. That's the, it is. That's like the fucking... The top-notch reaction that we want is to hear that chant of "This is awesome" or "Holy shit" or yeah. "Or how the fuck did they do that?" You know, just which is funny because like I used to think all these big like moves, like me jumping off of a balcony or something like that, do it. You know what? You know, I got my first ever "This is awesome" chant at ACW. Really? Purely just off of headbutts. Really? Nothing but a streak of headbutts. Oh wow! Yes, and that's why. I am now deemed the king of the headbutt. There you go. Okay. That's why I deem myself the king of the head because the, the my headbutts got so over. Yeah. Like all I did was just give headbutt after headbutt after headbutt after headbutt. Did and then I the, headbutt. Did you have the throw out yeah. when you were doing? Yeah. Oh. Then I headbutt the referee. <laughs> did you get disqualified? No. Because oh, this good. is ACW. Oh, there's no. You don't get disqualified for that. Oh, okay. They good. actually adore that. And then all of a sudden, I headbutt my tag team partner because I was just in such in the zone of giving headbutts. And then I just did this whole Super Saiyan scream, and everybody bumped. 
Oh, that's awesome, dude. I wish I could have seen that. I mean, I got it online somewhere. That's awesome. It's somewhere online. I can tell you that for sure. And, uh, and, and all of a sudden, I got a This Is Awesome chant yeah. just off of headbutts. That's awesome. Something dude. as simple as that. I wish I could have seen that, man. Yeah, I, I like after this, I can show. I think I can show it to you. I can look for it. What about uh, number three? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I got to think about that one. Um, Eddie Guerrero and JBL, the bull rope match. Um, where Eddie Guerrero was just no. Actually, let me take that back. The triple threat, Benoit. This ain't WWE, so I can't. I I will mention Benoit. That's Benoit, right. or the match where, or if you watch, if you look for it on the WWE Network, um, it'll be the match where they'll say where Shawn Michaels and Triple H battles in a triple threat in, in match. A triple threat match for the WWE title or for the World, World Heavyweight Championship. Title? Yeah, but it was Benoit's match. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean, yeah. WrestleMania 20 main event. Yeah. Yep. That's a good one. That, that's my third favorite match. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. <sighs> well, what can you say about yours? Well, man, there's, there's quite a few, but top three uh, that I. <laughs> there's not even a technical wrestling match, but number three would be uh, Brock Lesnar and John Cena at SummerSlam 2014. Really? Yeah, he just destroys him, man. Like, it was. Just a shock and all kind of thing for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not even just me. Like, I'm not a Cena fan at all, but halfway through the match, I found myself feeling sorry for well, John Cena. It actually shocks me that yeah. you're not a Cena fan. Oh, I'm sorry. He's so much like Hogan. Yeah, well. Keep in mind, I was a Hogan fan when I didn't know the business. You know? Yeah. But anyway, I'm still a Hogan fan because I'll never take that part away from mm. my life. But, mm. but um,. I gotta say that's number three. Number two for me, we were talking about it earlier uh, before the podcast was uh, <clears throat> Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 21. Yep, that was crazy. I was uh, at the beginning of the match, all about Shawn Michaels winning that match, and then by the time it ended, I was standing up in my friend's living room because he was watching over there, and I was clapping. I was, uh, I was just, yep, I was just so. Even with Kurt winning it. You know, I was shocked, but I was happy because it was such a, that was the, this is awesome, you know, or the holy shit. Yeah. You know, the first time I'd really heard it. And, uh, it was the, just at that, to that point, the greatest match I'd ever seen. And, uh, number one, oh, number one, I gotta go with, you know, I know a lot of, it's a lot of people's favorite, but, uh. Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, WrestleMania 25. Oh, good match, man. Yeah, that's great. That's just like the best match I've ever seen, WWE wise. Uh, I but you know, there's seven. Like, I, was that our was that our favorites or was that the greatest? Oh, that was my. These are our favorites. Oh shit. Okay. Well, yeah. my favorite. That yeah, yeah. I'd have to I'd have to go with those three. My favorites, like the greatest, would be the same as number one, the Shawn Michaels Undertaker WrestleMania 25. Uh, I really enjoyed the champ, the WWE title match at Royal Rumble 2015. Uh, Brock Lesnar as champion against Seth Rollins and uh, John Cena, Triple Threat, where it looked like Rollins and Cena worked together to take out Brock. Yeah. And he just rises from the dead and kills both of them. <laughs> and beats the Brock Lesnar is that monster. Yeah, Brock Lesnar's the demon, man. Like he's he's unstoppable, man. Like and it's 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 insane the way they though they did that match. Like it was great. Like and the curb stomp, two curb stomps, and then he like Goes to do another one, and he just picks him up midair. F five, and the match awesome. is over. You know, matter of fact, I'm probably gonna watch that match here. In a minute. <laughs> like, right, let's do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so yeah. Anyway, uh, so what else were we gonna say? Were we gonna talk about something else? Um. Well.
I'm not sure, man. I don't even remember. We've been on here an hour and 20 minutes already. Yeah, we have. But um, I wouldn't say, I'd say it was a pretty good first episode. Um, you know, we got a little bit to get to know us and kind of thing. And we'll, uh, you know, we'll definitely be back next week with another episode. We'll definitely. And uh, we'll have more to talk about because uh, we've got, uh, you know what, let's uh, go ahead and plug a few of the shows we've got coming up. On, um, let's see, the 19th, uh, I have a title defense against Dean Lambert in Mid-South Wrestling Alliance in Oklahoma City, defending my undisputed Oklahoma championship uh, that night. Uh, I'm sure you'll be doing something there. You're going up there with me. Um, yeah. The next night, we go. We turn around the next morning, go all the way back to Lubbock, Texas. Lubbock, Texas. Um, I got a match against uh, Daniel King. I'm in the suicide uh, six six way elimination match with. Uh, well, I know for sure myself, uh, Justin Taylor, um, Jordan Caleb's the guy I've been feuding with there, and LC Green, and there's two more guys I can't remember who they are. I've never met them before. I don't think, and um, pretty sure I'll win that. Um, then after that, uh, I'm done for a few days, actually. Uh, and then the next, next, next Sunday, day, that yeah. May the 21st, I got to have a... Florida, right? No, 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 no. Actually, ACW. Uh, that oh, Florida, wait, that's right. The Florida one got canceled. Oh, actually. the Florida show got canceled. Yeah, the yeah. show in Florida got canceled, EDMWE. Oh. But uh, y'all follow that page on Instagram and everything. That's a big show that's coming up. Uh, it'll be, that first ever e EDMWE show will be in Houston on August the 13th. Right on. But, yeah. Um, oh, I was going to tell you something, man. Uh, I, got a, I got a message the other day. Uh, let me read you this real quick. I was going to bring this up to you the other day about... I got a, a promoter from another country contacted me. Really? Yeah. Let me find right it. His name is Anub Sharma. Yeah. From Morina, India. Hmm. Asked about He'll be opening his wrestling federation in India in 2018. I'd like to know if me and two others would like to join him. And I said, what's it called? And he said, the, the name is, in, is getting trademarked. The company's name will be World Wrestling Championships. And called I, what? World Wrestling Championships. WWC? Yeah. Hmm. So I was like, well, okay. Uh, I said... Okay, well, let me know when you get it going. He goes, how much money do you want to join us? I said, well, that depends on how often you need me and often you run shows. He goes, we need you for six months and eight matches a month. And I was like, geez, man, okay. Uh, so I just threw a number out there. And I said, because I don't know if this is bullshit or not, you know. You know, I don't yeah. have a clue. So I threw a number out there. I said, you pay me a thousand bucks a match. And he goes, oh, that's really, really high. And I was like, okay. And he goes, we'll be able to pay you seven fifty a match, including your expenses and hotel, food, and flight tickets. Hmm. And I was like, uh, okay, can I bring a partner? He goes, yeah, you can bring two. And I said, I didn't ask about two. I just know one that'll go with me for sure. I was talking about you, of yeah. course. You know, so. Uh, in that case, uh. You're going to bring somebody from God's work because you're to encounter one of my tag team partners. Well, I think he wants me solo. So, I mean, I'd probably just bring you and one. I mean, I'm not bringing Skip to India. Fuck that. He already went and worked Puerto Rico. But, like, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I just don't know if they'd like Skip. <laughs> I'll ask him about him. If they want him, I'll bring him. Fuck it. You know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll run tag team in India. I'm pretty sure my boy Thomas wouldn't mind. But if they want to pay for everything plus that much a match, you know, then I'll do it. You know, it's pretty good money. I just have to be gone for a while. 
Alright, life of a worker. We're gone a lot. Alright, folks. Well, thanks for tuning in tonight on the first ever episode of the Big Time Holy Hour Podcast. We'll be back next week with another episode. And uh, we wanted to plug a few things out there, get a few things off our chest, and, you know, get you a little bit of, get to know Father Padge, Reggie Lincoln. Uh, this has been Father Padge. Big Time Reggie Lincoln here. And we will see y'all next week, wrestling fans. <laughs>